On the canva.com website, you're going to click on create a design at the top right corner. Then click on custom size and type in the width and height of the design you want to create. I will be using A5 page dimensions. First, I'm going to look for all the illustrations that I might want to use. To do this, I went to elements on the left and typed red flowers in the search bar. Then I clicked on graphics. Sometimes when I click on a certain graphic, it gives recommendations of similar graphics. This is how I look for illustrations that can work as a theme. After I collected all the elements that I want to use, I clicked on Add Page at the bottom. This page will be my cover page for February. To start off, I went to text on the left and added a heading. I went to the illustration page and copied an illustration to use for the cover page. You can change the letter spacing and the line spacing at the top to make the letters closer or further away from each other. I wanted to add another illustration, but I wasn't quite sure which one to use, so I tried out quite a few until I found the one that I liked the most. I resized the illustration so that the roses are the same size. This makes it look more like one complete element rather than two separate ones. Next, we're going to create the calendar for this month. For the grid, I went to elements on the left and then typed grid in the search bar. Then I clicked on graphics. This grid is originally white, so if you use this one, you will only be able to see it if you make it a different color or if you change the background color. I want the days of the week to be white text on top of a color. So I went to elements and then lines and shapes and clicked on this square. Then I resized it to the desired size. The more you zoom in, the more control you have over the sizing. Next, I added all the titles. I want the calendar to spread over two pages, so I copied the grid onto the next page and cropped it. Next, I added in all the dates. I want you guys to know that this planner will be available as a printable on my Etsy shop. So if you'd like to support me, you can purchase this month's planner. The link will be in the description box below.
When you resize an element, it shows you the width and the height of the element. This is quite helpful when you have elements on different pages that you want the same height or width. You can group elements together by highlighting all of them and then clicking on Group at the top. To check if the grids are aligned, I go to this little square at the bottom right to get an overview of all the pages. On the right of the calendar, I wanted to create a lined notes section, but I didn't want to go through all the trouble of putting in each line separately, so I went to my January planner and copied the lines that I created previously in the weekly planning section. I know it's a bit of cheating, but if you want to know how I created this lined section, you can go and watch my January planner video. All I did was go to elements, then under lines and shapes, I clicked on the line, resized it and copied it multiple times. I saw that the lines weren't all completely aligned, so I quickly fixed all of them. I regularly go back to the overview to see if the illustrations and elements are balanced. Next, I want to have the same monthly budget spread as I had for January, so I went back to my January planner and copied the monthly budget page. I played around with different fonts, but in the end I stayed with the two fonts I've used in the calendar. On the next page, I want to create a section for my tasks of the month, as well as a goal planning section. For the task list, I copied the lines that I used for the notes section of the calendar. I want to have a checkbox on each line, so I went to elements and then lines and shapes. I chose this square frame and shrunk it to the desired size. Like I mentioned before, the more you zoom in, the more control you have over the sizing and position of elements.
For my goals section, I went to lines and shapes again and clicked on the square. I want to have three sections, each for a different goal. This circle shape you can also find under lines and shapes. When you use the line element, you can adjust the thickness as well as the type of line at the top. In each goal section, I want to write my goal at the top and then underneath it, I want to write the steps that I need to do to achieve that goal. I really struggled to decide what color I want the goal sections, but I finally decided on this sage green color. The next two pages will be for my weekly planning. On the first page, I want to have a section where I write my top three priorities my to-do list for the week, a meal planning section, and a habit tracker. For the priority section, I created three boxes.
I didn't want the lines of the to-do list so close to each other, so I deleted all of them and recopied the lines of the monthly task list. The only problem now is that the lines are too long, and to shorten each one individually is a lot of effort. So instead I inserted a square and made it white. I shrunk it to the desired width and length to cover up a part of the lines. I want to have a box for each day of the week. To make the border thinner, shrink the shape and then pull the sides. After I finished the two weekly planning pages, I just copied them for each week of February and changed the dates. Now I'm just adding a blank page between every page for printing purposes. You'll see how this works in a minute. I downloaded the planner in high quality PDF format. I want to have my planner pages in A5 size and my printer can only print in A4. So for the cover page, I selected page one, then I selected two pages per sheet, 
and I set the scale to fit to paper. Once the cover page was printed out, I put it back into the feed exactly as it came out. Now to print the second planner page, I'm going to select page 2 and 3. This is where the blank pages come into play. By printing it like this, it will be printed on the back of the first page. Now you just print all the pages like this. One without a blank page, then one with a blank page in front. I hope I'm making sense. Once all the pages are printed out, we can mark where they need to be cut and where the holes need to be punched. I created this template to use for the markings. To punch the holes I used this regular hole punch and just removed the bottom so that I can see where to punch the holes. This planner turned out so beautiful. I am so happy with the outcome and I hope you guys like the end product as well. If you do, please leave a like and comment down below which planner page was your favorite. If you would like to support me, you can go have a look at my Etsy shop JM Things Printables and purchase this design or any of my other planner designs. Another way you can support me is just by subscribing to my channel. It's free to do and it really helps me out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, bye!